Welcome back. This is video two from Andrew Klein in our video series on how to bring models in from Autodesk Maya 2009 uh, into Photoshop CS4 using the new Photoshop CS4 3D paint capabilities. Uh, now what I have is couch model. We were able to bring it in earlier from uh, Maya and in the first video we looked at how to uh, actually bring this into the space. Uh, I'm now positioning this on the document. I'm holding down alt and clicking and I can move this from side to side uh, and I can actually just click in a free space and rotate. These controls are very similar to what you'd expect inside uh, of a program like Pixelogic's ZBrush. They're the exact same controls. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually going to scale this up now. The one difference between uh, a program like ZBrush and Photoshop and this control is uh, how we zoom in. And I'm going to use my manipulator to do that by scaling this up. I opened up the manipulator by either getting it from the toolbar or by choosing its hotkey, which is the letter K. And let me get in here and focus a little bit more on this section. Um, and I'm going to just rotate this into place. So uh, this is my seam. It's uh, it's pretty nasty. Uh, it's you know running up the side of the model. It's based on my UVs. Uh, and we're going to take a look at how to actually paint this out. Uh, now I find the easiest thing to do when painting this out is, is not to just try and clone stamp this, but to uh, find an area of clean texture, probably from our source, and apply that on. Uh, it's going to give us a little bit more accuracy in, in doing this. Uh, and for that, first of all, I want to examine uh, the space that I have here and, and the sort of amount of repetitions that should be in place. Uh, I see these little sort of S-shaped uh, pattern elements on the couch. Uh, and I honestly feel I've got sort of one here, one that should curve a second way, and then a third one. So we've got sort of three rows of these going down. Uh, that's roughly how much we should have in this space. But again, it gets all kind of muddled along the seam. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the File menu and choose Open. And I'm going to grab the original color texture again, just opening it up in sort of our flat 2D space. And here we can see it's a, a 1024 by 1024 texture. It's not all that big, uh, but we're eventually gonna be saving back to this texture space anyway. Uh, I wanna find a good clean area of this texture like we've got here. Uh, and I'm gonna grab my marquee select tool, hotkey M. Uh, and let's see if I can get uh, those roughly three rows of texture selected. Uh, I will grab this selection area. I'm going to hit Control C to copy, uh, or Command C if you're on a Mac like I am. Uh, and I'm going to hit F to leave my full screen view real quick. That's going to allow me to switch to my uh, other texture. And then I'll hit F again to pop back into this uh, other texture space. This is my 3D space now that I'm in, though. Uh, and I'm going to hit Command V or Control V if you're on a PC. And paste this little texture sample on. It's just another layer in my document. Uh, and I'm going to actually transform this up in size on top of a 3D layer. What I'm going to try and do here is roughly match up these shapes so that they fit in place, which is going to mean a little bit of rotation probably. We'll see. I think that uh, does a pretty good job of matching it out. And now we've certainly covered up that area of the texture. Uh, what I want to do next, I'm going to hit E for the eraser, and I'm just going to erase out what I feel is some unneeded border stuff for now. And I'm uh, just going to do this sort of very slowly around the sides. And almost there. There we go. I think that's now pretty workable. Uh, I'm going to take this uh, next up, and I just want to make sure that this is conforming properly to the model. It looks like it needs to be stretched a little bit at, at the bottom. To do that, I'm going to go into uh, Edit, uh, Transform, and choose Warp, which is going to give me my Warp dialog. And I can use this lattice, which sort of appears on top of my texture, to help stretch and deform this 
um, until it seemingly fits on the pattern behind it. Try and get this into place. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, again, we can maybe clone stamp some of this out in just a minute. But um, I think this little distortion, I'll hit enter to complete it. I think this distortion actually helps out quite a bit over what we saw a second ago. And I'm just going to do a little bit more erasing now to clean this up at the end. Well, now that I have this, if I want to continue it on, I can actually use my clone stamp tool. And you'll actually notice a new feature of the clone stamp tool. You can actually see it if I brush over this is that my clone stamp tool is going to have a preview of um, what I am currently hovering over and what I'm going to paint towards. I'm going to hold down option to select an area of the surface. Uh, and you'll notice I'm at sampling only the current layer. I don't want to be sampling all the layers beneath it as well. And I'm going to try and continue painting some of this. And I can pretty easily now extend some of this detail upwards, going up across the model to add in additional elements. And if there's parts I still need to erase back out, I can come in and do that. So I find this is a pretty easy way to continue that pattern along. Uh, and I think we're at the point where now we can probably merge this down. Just like merging any layer in Photoshop, I can hit Command E or Control E if you're on a PC, and it's going to now drop that right onto the model. Uh, now, the great part about this, you'll notice when I hit K and get my manipulator again, this is now actually on my 3D model. And we can see it's actually overpainted that seam area. And that's it, to be honest. That's all we have to do to successfully make this work. I'd continue that process, honestly, across the seams for the rest of the model, but uh, I think you guys can pretty much get the idea from there. Uh, to wrap this up, let's look at how to get this back into uh, Maya. Um, to save this element, uh, I actually just can't go to uh, File and, and go to Save As. Uh, it's not going to save um, the textures. It's just going to save the image of the screen. So that's not what I'm after. Uh, instead, I'm going to go to 3D. And again, I'll show all my menu items. Uh, and I'm going to choose Export 3D Layer. Uh, from that, I can choose to export back out my OBJ. We'll just allow it to do that first. I'll call this Couch 2. I haven't really edited the OBJ, but that's Couch 2. Uh, and then it allows me to export out my textures as well. Uh, I'll save these as a Targa format, and it will export out the texture which I painted. So I will hit OK. And let's actually go and maybe open that up. Let's see what we've got. Um, here's my new Couch 1 Targa. Let's open this one up. If we notice now, if we compare my original Targa, we'll zoom out here. If I compare this texture with my completed one, I don't know if you can see some of these areas here seem like they've been updated and that's where the seams were on the map. Well to make this complete let's go back into Maya which is hiding out open here behind me and uh, I'm gonna select my model go into the color channel and reload my texture to the current slot. And now if I come back in and I check out this bottom area, we'll actually be able to notice here's the part I didn't paint. There's the seam still left to be done. Uh, and here's the seams I just painted out a second ago. A little bit of distortion here, but honestly it's working a whole lot better than it was before we came in and edited this. So I hope you enjoyed this demo, rather brief, uh, but we're looking at bringing models back and forth between Maya and Photoshop. Hope you enjoyed it. For more tutorials, please check out andrewkline.net.